Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Eric Schmidt. I'm a board certified OBGYN, and today we're going to be talking about uterine fibroids and their treatment. I also have with me Dr. Olga. Hi everybody, I'm Olga Valieva. I'm also a certified OBGYN here at Valley Medical Center. I'll be joining Dr. Schmidt and discussing fibroids. Dr. Schmidt, can you tell me about uterine fibroids and what they are? Of course. Uterine fibroids are growths within the uterine muscle. They are a specific cell in the uterus that um, decides to all of a sudden grow. Mm -hmm. And why we might call these tumors, they're not actually usually a cancerous tumor. Um, that is a one in thousands risk, so very rare. But they're benign growths in the uterus uh, that can cause some uh, pretty drastic symptoms. Mm -hmm. And to add to that, sometimes they can be within the uterus, on the outside of the uterus, and cause different symptoms depending on the location of them. Right. So we talked about what fibroids are. Let's talk about some of the risk factors. So uh, women, about 70 to 80% may have fibroids. Mm -hmm. Now, a big distinction is whether they're symptomatic, because mm -hmm. about only 25% may be symptomatic from their fibroids, and we'll talk about the symptoms in a little bit. But uh, specifically in certain uh, cultures or ethnicities, there is an increased prevalence of fibroids. Mm -hmm. uh, specifically in African American women, mm -hmm. do have about a two to three um, times increased risk of fibroids or growing larger fibroids. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about some of the symptoms of fibroids. Uh, most commonly, patients will present with heavy menstrual bleeding um, that's gotten even heavier than it used to be before. Sometimes patients will come in saying that they have pain, discomfort, or what we call bulk symptoms, meaning the fibroids have gotten so big that they're pushing on other organs in their body. And sometimes it's a combination of the both. Um, there are a few instances where fibroids can also cause infertility, and that could be in and of itself just a presenting symptom. Um, and those are some of the most common things that we see women or patients complaining of. Okay. So you mentioned that about 20, 25% of patients are symptomatic of their fibroids. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the first things we do when patients come to us with these complaints or concerns is we get imaging, and that is typically done with a pelvic ultrasound. That's something that either a primary or an OBGYN can order for them, and it gives us a really good look at their uterus, their ovaries, and you know, locating the fibroids. Occasionally, fibroids are found incidentally or by accident when patients are getting uh, either CT or an MRI for another issue, um, and that's how we get to find out about other fibroids that are not necessarily causing them symptoms. Okay, Dr. Olga. Okay. We talked a lot about fibroids, now let's talk about the treatment. Okay. Well, it first matters if the symptoms are present, because fibroids don't always need treatment. Mm -hmm. And so one option is um, to just observe them. Mm -hmm. And if they're not causing symptoms, um, they might not need any medication treatment or any surgical treatment. But if one is causing symptoms, mm -hmm. there are some medical treatments um, that can help with treating mainly bleeding symptoms of fibroids to help make the menstrual cycle uh, hopefully lighter and more, more tolerable. Um, and those would include things like hormonal therapies, like birth control pills, or Depo Provera, or Mirena IUD. All those are good options for treatment of fibroids. Um, and then there can be other options that um, may decrease the, um, the hormones, such as Lupron, mm -hmm. um, or another medication very similar to that. And there is a non-hormonal medication treatment option called tranexamic acid. Now this um, uh, may help decrease that monthly bleeding also. And you know, if patients aren't happy with the results of the medical management or medications, or if they want more surgical options, and there are options for that as well. The big deciding factor as far as medical management or surgical management is whether or not they want to have future pregnancies as well. Um, we break them, our treatment options, depending on whether pregnancy is a consideration. If patients are wanting to, what we say, conserve their uterus and continue a pregnancy, the biggest surgical or the best surgical option would be to do a procedure called myomectomy or just removal of the fibroids because that lets us just remove the abnormal tissue, the fibroid tissue, and keep the uterus intact. Um, if patients are not interested in what we call fertility sparing procedures, then some of the options would include either an ablation procedure such as uterine artery embolization. Um, one of the newer technologies, which we'll talk about in a second with a radiofrequency ablation or a hysterectomy. So we just talked about a lot of 
good treatment options for uterine fibroids. Now, how do we figure out what's best for each individual patient? Mm -hmm. Well, one of the first questions we, we like to know is where that person is at as far as their desire for future childbearing because the, there's options that we have that um, for treatment that will keep somebody's ability to conceive in the future and there's options that will take away the ability to conceive in the future. A lot of this may depend on the size of the fibroids, where they're located in the muscle of the uterus, and so if, if they're located towards the inside um, of the uterus, uh, or we call submucosal fibroids, uh, those might be able to take an out, taken out with what you mentioned, hysteroscopy, mm -hmm. and that's one of the most minimally invasive options we can do. Mm -hmm. um, or if they're bigger or in other parts of the uterus, they might require more major surgeries, uh, like myomectomy or hysterectomy, which would be removing the uterus. Mm -hmm. One of the newer treatment options that we are offering at Valley Medical Center is Assessa. Assessa is an option to treat fibroids with radiofrequency ablation technology. Um, the benefits of this procedure would be to shrink the fibroid without having to go through a bigger surgery such as a myomectomy or hysterectomy. Um, and patients typically have less blood loss, less pain, um, definitely have less incisions and have a much faster recovery with this option. Mm -hmm. So we talked a lot about uterine fibroids, their symptoms, and their treatments. And I urge patients to, if they feel like they're having symptoms of uterine fibroids, to contact their primary care provider mm -hmm. where they can start the workup and get the ultrasound, which we talked about previously. And then, uh, if it's warranted, a referral to us so we can see them. Here at Valley, we offer all of the medical and surgical treatment options that we discussed previously. Also, Olga and I have additional certification mm -hmm. in minimally invasive gynecologic surgery to help treat women for these issues in the least invasive way possible. If you'd like to learn more about fibroid treatments here at Valley Medical Center, please visit our website.